Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. People who are streaming with us, thank you for joining us here at Messiah. Our, our guiding statement is living Jesus, sharing Jesus in our community and in our world. Uh, you were giving a ministry folder as you came in, kind of make note of uh, things that are, are happening. I want to highlight a couple things. First of all, uh, two weeks from now, two Saturdays from now, on September 30th, uh, the Lutheran Women's Missionary League is having their fall zone rally here at Messiah. And so the ladies of the congregation are invited to be a part of that. Uh, Registration is around 9.30 and it will be from 10 o'clock until uh, early afternoon, probably 2 o'clock or so. L lunch will be provided. Uh, and actually, uh, it talks more about all that's going on. The vicar, Vicar Matt uh, from uh, Emmanuel and Hamilton, actually is going to be doing the, the topic, Resting in God's Provision. Uh, they are collecting items also for the food, food co-op at the Fort Wayne Seminary. Uh, says food, but they collect blankets and all that stuff as well. So, so anyway, there's kind of an in-gathering as well uh, at that fall retreat. So, so anyway, I kind of want to bring that up for the ladies to, you know, might be interested in that. There's a registration form to fill out just so they make sure they have enough food and, and everything for the people who are attending. So, so that's going to be on Saturday the 30th, and then on the very next day... Uh, which is Sunday, October 1st, two weeks from today. Uh, we have a church outdoor worship service and picnic. Uh, Saturday service will be the same as, as normal, but then Sunday morning uh, we're going to be meeting at 10 o'clock at uh, Sweet Gum Slope Shelter um, over the other side of the lake, uh, south side of the lake. But anyway, there's a map actually on the table uh, right below, below the bulletin board there's a map that will tell you exactly how to get the sweet gum shelter, uh, slope shelter. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet also. Uh, so we're going to have the worship service at 10 o'clock, and then the, the meal, luncheon, uh, will be uh, at 11 o'clock. Uh, 10 o'clock worship, 11 o'clock. Uh, the meat's provided, uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, drinks will be provided, tableware. All you, all you need to do is, uh, if you could bring a side dish to go along with that, uh, there's a sign-up sheet that you can sign up for any side or dessert or anything like that. And, and also a sign-up sheet will give you an idea of how many people is going to be here. Uh, so, so that's uh, going to be on October 1st. Uh, so we will not have worship here, but it's going to be on the other side of the lake. Jim, did I cover everything? I think I got everything uh, that needs to be talked about. He's, he's our master chef. He's going to be grilling along with Sean Horner. So, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, also, yeah, uh, you know, there's picnic tables, but you might more, be more comfortable if you bring lawn chairs. Uh, have you ever been to a worship service in a lawn chair? Uh, this is your opportunity. So, uh, so we're going to have that on uh, two weeks from today. So um, I think I covered everything. There's uh, other things that are going on. Uh, the ladies' Bible study started a few weeks ago. Uh, we're doing a book, uh, Max Licato, God never gives up on you. It's been a great study. So uh, if you're interested in that, maybe be, ladies be a part of that as well. We continue through the season of, of Pentecost. Uh, we are in, uh, got Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, uh, toward the end where it talks about forgiving, as we have been forgiven. And, uh, and so we're going to talk about forgiveness. That's the theme that we have in our, in our worship service today. Our opening hymn, of course, God himself is present. Uh, certainly he is with us. Uh, to pour his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness upon us. So please stand, uh, look to one another, and kind of wave the peace of the Lord. God be with you. If you shake a hand if you want to. Uh, and with that, let us all sing our opening hymn. <laughs>
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake, Grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Our intro today is from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that what we ask in faith we may obtain. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated as we hear from God's word. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from the 14th chapter of Romans. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord, and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand now for the triple alleluia, followed by our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay his master, ordered him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. 
So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that, they had, that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Will the children please come forward for our children's message? Hello, hello. How are you doing? Good to see you. I went, and Logan was there. I went about uh, two weeks ago, I think around a week, two weeks ago. I went and saw a soccer game. Uh, have any of you ever seen a soccer game or anyone ever played a soccer game? I, I went because uh, Logan's sister, Casey, uh, was playing soccer. Uh, she, I think you call it a midfielder, right? Is that her position? Is that her midfielders? And, uh, and we have a member, Abby Farler, actually is the goalie on that same team. So it was L Lakota West High School. And so played soccer. If you've ever seen soccer, uh, you know, it's really kind of a neat, neat game. But uh, when somebody does something wrong, makes a penalty, uh, that they're giving, given, and I have a picture here of the, the guy in the middle is a referee, and he has two cards he's holding up, a yellow card and a red card. Now, when someone makes a mistake, does something like, the, like tripping another player, they shouldn't be doing that, uh, so they get a yellow card. Now, a yellow card is, uh, don't do that again. Uh, but if you get two yellow cards... Then you get a red card. You know what happens when you get a red card? You get kicked out of the game. You can't play anymore. Now, some, sometimes they do something so bad that they don't even get a yellow card. They just get a red card right away. It's like you've got to leave right away. If there's something really bad. And so uh, you think about uh, forgiveness. Uh, just imagine if your parents gave you yellow cards and red cards. If you do something that you shouldn't do, that you're giving a yellow card. You think your parents would do that to you? 
Now, if you do something wrong twice, you get a red card, you get kicked out of the house. How, how would that be? That wouldn't be very, that wouldn't be fun. Uh, we, we get kicked out of the house every single day. You think you do two things wrong every day? Well, we, we all, that's called sin, right? You know, we do things we shouldn't do, uh, that's, that's sin. But, you know, our gospel reading that I read a little bit ago talks about uh, Peter asking, well, how often should I forgive someone? You know, if somebody does something bad to me, how often should we forgive them? You know, he says, should I do it seven times? Almost like you get seven yellow cards, and once you get to the seventh yellow card, you get a red card and you get kicked out. You think, think uh, what, did, what did Jesus say to that? Seven times? No, he said 70 times seven, which if you do the math, it's 490, which we're not going to be supposed to count to 490, uh, because probably we make, I don't know, I'm not sure we make 490 mistakes in a day. Maybe we do. Uh, we sin a lot. Uh, and that's not the point, you know, not 490, but he's saying that we should always forgive. And we should do that because God always forgives us, right? You know, that's why Jesus went to the cross. Jesus died on the cross so that we can be forgiven. And as he has forgiven us, uh, he says that we should forgive others. That we should, you know, if somebody does something bad. Now, that's kind of hard. When somebody does something to us that's not very nice, that's not easy to forgive. But, you know, that's what God does to us. You know, he forgives us, and, and so he wants us to forgive others. Not seven times, not 490 times, not two times, not two yellow cards, but always, always forgive because God always forgives us. So, so let's have a prayer. Go ahead and fold your hands and repeat it to me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. And as you have forgiven us, Help us to forgive others. Help us to love others. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you very much. You guys were really great today. So thank you so much. You may go back to your seats. Let us all continue. Uh, appropriately enough, we're talking about forgiveness. So we sing, forgive our sins as we forgive. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For the, about the last couple of years, I've been doing a sermon outline. Uh, and I know some of you I see, some of you kind of look it over and kind of follow along. Uh, some not, which, which is fine. Um, I, uh, I'm actually going to be having two quotes later in the sermon uh, that are fairly lengthy quotes. And, uh, and I decided to write them down pretty much word for word because some of us are visual learners and uh, so we may not catch the whole intent of the quote the first time but it gives you an opportunity to kind of look it over again and of course that that comes later in our our service today you know two questions are frequently we frequently face that have the same answer 
Two questions. First of all, what is a person's deepest need? And what is a person's greatest achievement? And the answer is forgiveness. Now, am I exaggerating? Perhaps, but until I, I think again how hard it is for us to forgive. How hard it is for me to say to my wife or to you, I was wrong, please forgive me. Sometimes we have a difficult time saying that. Until I recall how hard it is to let someone who owes me something to go free. To that forgiveness, Jesus calls us. For that forgiveness, the Spirit of God empowers us. Now we can forgive. But face up to it. We are unforgiving. We've all heard to err is human. Not to forgive is human too. In our natural human condition, our lives corrupted by sin, we have no way to reconcile with those who hurt us. Nor do we want to. Why do I want to have anything to do with that person over there after what they've done to me? Even as Christians, we often refuse to forgive. Christianity is really interesting. Jesus, you know, he just doesn't say to us to love our friends. He says love our enemies. Do good to those who persecute us. We ought to have that kind of attitude, that kind of, of spirit. But, but it's hard for us to do that. You know, we, we, we want to remain in control. And we like the feeling of having someone in our debt or, or under our power, whether oftentimes they are unaware of it, but we feel that we still have control over them. We have power over them. And what is that? That's, that's, that's selfishness. Selfishness still seeks to enslave us. Our brooding, moody attitudes are sometimes symptoms of an unforgiving heart. And what do we hear in our text? Wicked servant. Wicked servant. The king's judgment is, is just. Evil intentions, we are evildoers, denying forgiveness to others. For Jesus' sake, God releases us from our debt to him. You see, the king is tender toward us, filled with pity, long-suffering, and compassion. And he suspends the judgment we deserve since he imposed that judgment upon his son. You know, his great act of love toward us is seen in Jesus' death on the cross, which removes our sin and, and, and releases us from its consequences. You see, our debt to God is astronomical. You know, I don't know if I mentioned sinning 490 times in one day, whether we do, whether we don't, but I think we sin more than we realize. And that is a debt that we owe, and it is astronomical. Yet, with instant, full, and free forgiveness, God liberates us. Removing the debt. In our new relationship now with God, established by Christ, he then empowers us to forgive others. Now we can forgive. Now we can mature in our ability to receive and grant forgiveness. You see, it's important to do both. Sometimes we don't feel that we need to, we ought to be forgiven. You know, we have that guilt, and so we don't really receive it. It's important to receive it as well as to give it. The theologian Linsky quoted Archbishop Richard Trent 
with these words. The Christian stands in a middle point between mercy received and a mercy which he yet needs to receive. Sometimes the first is urged upon him as an argument for showing mercy, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you, but sometimes the last. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And thus, while he must ever look back on a mercy received as the source and motive of the mercy which he shows, he looks forward as well to the mercy which he yet needs. It's mercy received, then mercy given, and with mercy given, it's mercy received. So we can give up our attempts to control others through guilt. We let go of their sin. They are free. After one of his sermons, Myron Osberger was approached by a lawyer who said, I'm not a Christian. I've never accepted this idea of the innocent suffering for the guilty, this this blood religion. And then Pastor Osberger replied, I'm I'm very sorry for you. For you can't have a happy marriage or a happy family or any lasting friendships in your social relations. And why not? The, The lawyer asked. Because you are not an angel, Osberger said, and you make mistakes. And as you make mistakes, the only way in which people can keep on accepting you is if they, as innocent, will forgive you and accept you. You know, fortunately, the lawyer heard Osberger's next sermon. In it, he preached the cross, which showed in Jesus' death the depth of God's forgiveness as he absorbed his own wrath on our sin by his love and his extended forgiveness. And now we can move from brooding resentment for the hurts we have received to the forgiveness of Christ, which which sets us free. It truly does set us free. A Christian will find it cheaper to pardon than to resent. Forgiveness saves the expense of anger, the cost of hatred, the waste of spirits. It's true. There is only one answer to these two penetrating questions we ask ourselves. What do I need most? Forgiveness. What is my greatest achievement? Forgiveness. Forgiven by God for Jesus' sake, we can now forgive. And so we pray to our gracious Father in heaven, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding guard our hearts, guard our minds in Christ unto life everlasting. Amen. Offerings are given at the back of the church as we enter, as we leave. But once again, we are blessed to be able to have a musical offering today. And during this time, it's an opportunity for us to just think about uh, the message, think about uh, the prayers uh, that will be lifted up in this and receiving Holy Communion.
we come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we do thank you for the grace, mercy, and peace that you have poured upon us. Undeserving as we are, for we have sinned greatly against you, against others. And even though we forg are forgiven by you, oftentimes we still hold resentment and, and hardship and hatred towards others. Lord, we pray that you will help us to be forgiving as you have forgiven us. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, for those who need strength and healing, many listed in our bulletin, Lord, we place them in your hands. Randy Bazard, Tina Browning, and Beth Clements, Jennifer Dietrich, Bob Ditz, Wayne Debling, and Jan Friedrich, Connie and Skip Glazer, Lois Hansen, Lois Harrison, Sandy Jackish, we pray for Janae and also Shauna Loggins, uh, Gary Logsdon, Marilyn McEnany, Joanna Murphy, Karen Rhodes, Diana and Daryl Stevens, Pastor Sugatan, Ann Stroh, Debbie Vanderpool, Jonathan Wingo, Marsha Wingo. Dear Lord, we also lift up Gail Lips, who will be having oral surgery done on her teeth later this week. Lord, we pray that you will give her the strength that she needs. And there are others that are on our hearts and minds. Whatever the need may be, Lord, we pray that you will give them the strength needed. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we thank you as you have forgiven us. We are to forgive others. We are to be there for one another. And Lord, help us to recognize opportunities. Opportunities to love, opportunities to forgive, opportunities to serve the people that are around us. Bless this ministry that we have here at Messiah Lutheran and all of us individually with the contacts and the relationships that we have each and every day. Lord, use us as your servants. Help us to to share the love of Jesus and through the things that we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for our nations and nations around the world. We pray for peace. We pray for unity. For people who are struggling wherever it may be within our own nation or our neighborhoods or throughout the world. Dear Lord, we pray you'll bless them. And, and may the voice of the church be clearly heard so that people can see the good news that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we thank you for birthdays, celebrated anniversaries, celebrated blessings that we have in our lives, Lord. Help us to recognize that you are the author, the giver of those blessings. Lord, in your mercy. And dear Lord, as we are able this day, once again, to partake in the Lord's Supper, we thank you that we can receive this bread and wine knowing that it is your body and blood, the body and blood you gave and shed for us on the cross, that we can be forgiven of our sins, strengthened in our faith, promised life everlasting. Lord, we lift all of these prayers up to you. We pray everything in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. We have had the service of the word. We continue now with the service of the sacrament. And we begin with the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God, for the countless blessings that you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
If you are able, please stand and we continue our worship. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and says, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup of the New Testament in my blood shed to you on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Drink the blood of Jesus, shed to you on the cross, forgive us of all your sins. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen, preserve you in true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen.
Please stand. And now may the true body and most precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith into life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us all sing together our Nunc the Minutes. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We pray together our post-communion prayer. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Receive God's benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Before we sing our closing hymn, just one, one announcement I want to make. Today, we mentioned this a few weeks ago, but this is our open house for our Sunday school. And so I do hope that as you leave, go ahead and grab a dessert, treat, whatever, coffee cup and go downstairs and look at the Sunday school room, the youth room. Uh, they spent a lot of work to get it all ready for this next ministry year. While you're down there, you may want to even look at some of the preschool rooms. You may not have ever even seen the preschool that meets here, uh, but the rooms, uh, you all look, look at that as well. And so please take some time. There's going to be somebody that will actually help you go up and down the elevator if you want to use the elevator or just use the steps. But please, I, I would encourage you all to, to look at the work that they've done in our Sunday school rooms. So let us go ahead and conclude now by singing from all that dwell below the skies. <laughs>